Oxton Organics is a market garden in Worcestershire, which is in the West Midlands in England. Um, I actually was lucky enough to be farm intern there last season, and then I've come back here the last month or so to work to help them actually do a lot of processing of seed crops and things. It's an organic market garden. Julian and Jane set it up about 30, more than 30 years ago, so they've been really Time. Their way of farming has changed quite dramatically over that time. They've always been organic, but their methods of farming has evolved. And now uh, Jane and Julian and Jane's son, Jake, run the business. So Jake and Jane run the business. And um, they converted to no-till about four years ago. Uh, and they've also changed the way that they farm in a no-till system significantly since they first went no-till. Um, they started using a lot of inputs of compost um, and now they've been slowly transitioning to using a lot more cover crops, um, this idea of roots in the ground year round and how that affects the soil health and microbiology. So when you're growing crops with cover crops, um, you literally have a generally quite a low growing species growing with your veg, your market crop. We've done a lot of experimenting, particularly over the last 12 months with when is best to sow those cover crops. And it varies depending on crop and the time of year, but generally they're sown at the time of planting or very soon after. And the idea is that those plants, that diverse group of plants grow together and make those connections in the soil. Actually, even just looking at, visually looking at the soil since the start of last season, it's visibly healthier. Uh, plants seem more resilient, particularly to pests and disease. We had a virus, we think, come into one of the polytunnels this season and pretty much within a day or two, uh, three or four of the plants had been killed completely. It was so fast, it happened so fast. Then it just stopped. So they were the plants nearest to the door, the entrance of the polytunnel, and they went down with this virus. They were pretty much dead within 24 hours, but suddenly it just didn't progress any further through the crop. And this is just us hypothesizing, but we kind of feel like that those strong networks, that communication network in the soil through that microbial life has enabled those plants to activate their immune, immune system and defend themselves against this virus because none of the other cucumbers went down with that. And Jane, she felt that in the past, if that had happened, when they've had similar things happen, they would have lost the whole crop, particularly when they were tilling. And also we were noticing things like there were aphids on the weeds, but not on the crops in some of the tunnels, which is pretty amazing. Um, Straight away, there are some drawbacks that I kind of can think that presented themselves, but I also think the drawback is connected to us having to reframe what a plant looks like and what plant health is. Because from my experience, the idea of throwing loads of fertilizers and certain gardening practices to produce a really lush green plant, that doesn't necessarily mean the plant is healthy. It doesn't necessarily mean it's got a really strong immune system. It's got all of those connections that it needs to be robust. It's not producing all those ectodermis have lights. And we need to reframe a little bit in our minds sometimes what a healthy plant really is and what it looks like. With us, some of the drawbacks, potentially some of the crops didn't grow as big as we thought they'd look like, but actually they produced for much longer and they could tolerate being picked and harvested over a longer period of time and they didn't succumb to as many pests as maybe they would have in the past. So maybe the yield, initial yield wasn't as high and the plants didn't look as big and robust, but over a longer period of time, they perform much better. So it's kind of weighing it up and yeah, that reframing of what plant health really is, I think. So we were worried about competition. Uh, when we were selecting plants, we tried to think about how the plant would grow, its growth habit, uh, how it would behave, how it might work alongside those vegetable crops but we were also kind of basing a lot of these ideas on quorum sensing density dependent collaborative behavior so in terms of microbes it means where enough microbes reach a quorum and work collaboratively and not competitively and by doing so they can switch on different genes so it can cause a plant to express itself in different ways with those ideas in mind by having lots of diversity in these cover crops we were hoping that we're encouraging that diversity in the soil microbiome. And I think it's a little bit to do with management as well. So where plants cover crops did grow quite big, we tend to strim and mow, and because it's such a small scale, we can do that. So we could go into the tunnels. We grew, grew a lot of flax as cover crop, which has been great. It does grow quite tall. So we could go in and cut that quite short throughout the season 
strewn really easily up the roads underneath the tomatoes and things like that. So it's kind of a little bit about, again, reframing what a healthy plant is to understand what it should look like. It might not be as big as you expect. So you might think it's there's a lot of competition happening, but maybe there's not. And then weighing that up against all the benefits you're seeing from having this diversity of species and then a little bit of the way you manage it thrown in. There might be more competition if you let everything grow huge and then it is kind of survival of the fittest. But with managing it, you're trying to find a bit of a balance. And over winter, for the winter cover crops, we do a lot of under sowing of crops in the field in August. So in August, we pretty much under sowed the entire market garden. We made a huge mix. There was something like 27 species of plants in the mix and we had a huge bucket of it. And we spent about a week broadcast sowing and then hoeing in all of that green manure cover crop mix across the whole market garden. And that was on beds where there were already crops in the ground. So under sowing those crops or on beds where things had just been taken out and we'd sow that crop on a um, bare bed. And then those cover crops could establish and they were then the winter ground cover and they're still in the ground at the moment. Some do get frosted off, some winter kill, but we tried to choose a mix that was very diverse with things that would establish quickly and then they might get killed off, but then there's other things that would be longer lasting. So we're trying to move away from tarping, but at the moment during the summer, their crops are mowed or strimmed really close and then they're tarped off in, in when it's warm in the summer, they can tarp for a week or two and then that tarp is removed and the next crop is planted in. Um, but we've ex been experimenting with just mowing those cover crops off and planting straight into the debris. So not even tarping because all of that's organic matter is going straight in. You can mow, sometimes push, uh, push hoe through so if they need a little bit of extra help in termination, but lots of experimentation going on at Oxton Organics. And it's all, there's no right or wrong way. I feel at the moment where there are sometimes crops some of the cover crops stick around, but we kind of don't really feel that that's a bad thing. So last year, that photo of the leeks is actually the, the mix that we sowed in August, I think. That was the huge mix of many species, and it really was very much an experiment about what would work and what would survive. There's all sorts, but there was also handfuls of leftover vegetable seed from the year before. We grow quite a lot of cut flowers, so there's quite a lot of saved seed from the cut flowers thrown in. And it was kind of just an experiment to see what would grow and how it would grow and to get as many roots in the ground and as much cover as possible. There were green manure that was going across the whole of the market garden and going to be there for the whole winter. We weren't too worried about what was going in the mix. When we were selecting mixes for the tunnels, we had to be a bit more considered about what kind of crop was growing. Um, I think particularly focusing on low growing crops other things that, um, as I mentioned earlier, could easily be kept in check, could easily be mowed or strimmed if they needed to be. And the marigolds um, worked great. Lots of trefoil. We were also experimenting with green pathways to have roots in the ground and try and avoid those compactive pathways that are really common in tunnels. So we sowed, we drilled trefoil down the pathways and that worked really well. And again, the cucumbers, it was a mix of... Um, Things like flax, there was like a low grow flowering mix that we picked up from a seed company and we were kind of just seeing what worked and we've saved seed from a lot of this cover crop this year and then we've literally just spent the last week sorting through all that seed and making mixes for this coming year, trying to be a bit more organised so that we've got specific mixes that are all bagged and labelled up ready so at the point of planting we can just grab those and they can be sown and those mixes are very specific to each crop in what we think would work well with that crop having looked at what worked well last year. I feel like we're almost making land races of cover crops <laughs> so alongside trying to start doing land races of the vegetables it's also almost like we're creating these land races of cover crops and I kind of think if we're saving seeds, like James White says, with the microbiome, the microbial communities that are vectored on the seed to the mm. next generation, mm. I kind of feel like seeds might have a memory and they might remember the plants that they're grown with and form those microbial relationships in the soil with those plants. 
and then by saving the seeds of the vegetable plants and of the cover crops those are then vectored to the next generation and they kind of remember each other and they'll have that head start and they'll have that uh, straight away they'll be better off because they'll be growing together with crops they remember with their communities of endophytes all ready to go. So my suggestions for people that are just starting out would be don't give up uh, I think persevere and take time with it. I think experiment don't be don't be scared I think a lot of people are risk adverse and all get put off by a, a bit of a failure maybe if something doesn't quite work out it, you can easily just be put off by that and I think just keep going.